Hi, my name is Bjorn Sorensen, and I'm an Applications Engineer for Hawkridge Systems. Today we're going to be talking about how to create a universal bill of materials for weldments in SOLIDWORKS. For example, on my screen here you can see a welding table that I've built. This welding table consists of weldment structural members, plate or sheet metal components, as well as purchase parts, and what I want out of my bill of materials is a complete length for all of my weldment structural members, a length and width, so the cut dimensions of any sheet or plate parts, and complete usage for accounting, for example, of each of those components, as well as reporting for each type of component in a unit of measure that makes sense. The way that we're going to do this is by using equations, and more specifically, nested if statements. But before we get into that, let's take a look at the model that was used to create this drawing. So my welding table is an assembly. I have a primary weldment. I have base plates welded into each of the four legs. These are threaded, and threaded into each of these base plates is going to be one of my leveling legs. If I open the primary weldment up, we can see that I've applied some custom properties to each of my cut list items. So by default, because I've used the weldment structural members, a description is automatically populated with the description as it was created in the weldment profile. I've manually added a part number field and input a part number that's fairly consistent with what you would see if your company were using a document management system, for example. So square tubing one, a brief description, followed by my initials and the date. I've of course done this for each of my structural members. And the table top was created using the SolidWorks sheet metal tools, which by default will give me a variety of custom properties. So again, I've added a part number field here down at the bottom. And the only other thing that I've done manually is to change my description field. By default, a sheet metal part will say sheet for the description, but I like to be a little bit more specific. So what I've done is highlighted the text expression from the sheet metal thickness. I simply copy and paste that into my description Follow that up with my unit of measure, in this case inches, and then plate. And we can see that the evaluated value tells me that the description is going to read quarter inch plate. And of course, this will update parametrically if my material thickness changes. So going back to the drawing, we're now all set to create our custom bill of materials. So I'm going to delete out my existing bill of materials and add a new one in. And I'm going to base this off of the standard bill of materials that ships with every version of SOLIDWORKS. What I'm going to do slightly differently, since this is a weldment, is for my bomb type, select indented. For my numbering scheme, I'm going to choose detailed numbering. And I'm doing this just to highlight the differences between detailed numbering and flat numbering, which I'll show you in just a minute. And I'm also going to be sure to select detailed cut list. This puts my weldment cut list information into my bill of materials structure. So I hit OK, place my bomb on the anchor point, and if I zoom in here, we can see that with that detailed numbering scheme, I have a row for all of my top level components, and then rows for every component that reports to them. So I have item one is my overall weldment, and then I have all of the manufacturing information below it. Item two is my base plate, and because this was created using the sheet metal tools, I also have manufacturing information related to it. So if instead I just want my manufacturing information, I don't want my top level items to appear in my bill of materials, I can just click on the cross in the top left of my bill of materials. This opens up the property manager. And instead of detailed numbering, we're going to go with a flat numbering scheme. 
So to get rid of this top level row, I'm just going to hide it. Now for the base plate, I could either hide my manufacturing information, or using these three arrows on the left of my bomb, I can expand out the bomb, and I have a little minus sign on any of my top level components, which allows me to compress down to just the top level. So we'll collapse our whole bomb again and re-anchor it. Now we're ready to add our custom columns. So I'll right click on the quantity header, insert a column to the right, and SolidWorks enables me to pull properties directly from the respective models. In our case, we want to use length, and you'll notice that the length automatically populates for all of my structural members. We're going to create similar columns for our sheet metal properties, in this case the bounding box length and bounding box width. And then we'll also create two new columns but rather than applying a property to them, we'll just leave them blank and we'll fill in the title manually. So these of course are going to be my usage and unit of measure. So there's some formatting that probably should happen here. Because SolidWorks uses embedded Excel files, I have all of my usual Excel functionality. And in order to get these bounding box fields looking right, let's just expand them out a little bit. So this bill of materials is looking good. Let's go ahead and add our equations to our usage and unit of measure. So we want to click in the column header and click on equations in the pop-up window and this will open my equation editor window. Now I could enter these equations in manually or I can use the drop-downs that SolidWorks has provided. So what we want is an if statement. And we want to say that if our length is greater than zero, we know that we have a weldment structural member. Therefore, our total usage is going to be our length times our quantity. Now if length is not greater than zero, we know we have one of two other things, either a plate or a sheet metal component, or a purchase part. So we need another if statement, and at this point we have what's called a nested if statement. And so what we're going to do is a similar test here. We're going to say that if my bounding box width is greater than zero, well then we know that we have a sheet metal component. So the total amount being used here is going to be my bounding box area. That of course is going to be bounding box length times bounding box width times the quantity used. So if we don't satisfy either of these conditions, we don't have a length and we don't have a bounding box width, next what we know we have is going to be a purchase part. So we just want to report the quantity. I hit OK and my usage data updates accordingly. We're going to do a similar procedure for the unit of measure. Apply an equation, apply an if statement, and we're going to use the same test. If length is greater than zero, now in this case we're reporting a text value. We want linear inches. Otherwise, we put in another nested if statement. If our bounding box length is greater than zero, we know we have a sheet metal component, so we want to report square inches. And lastly, if it doesn't satisfy either of these tests, we just want to report each, because this should be a purchase part. We say OK, and now my bill of materials is ready to go. To create this as a template, we simply right-click 
on our cross in the upper left corner, save as, and save it as a template, give it a name, I've called mine Universal Weld Template 1, and save it to an area where we'll be able to find it easily again and again. Now we have a Universal Bill of Materials template for weldments that can be used for any of our welding projects. So that concludes today's video. We covered Universal Weldment Bomb template creation in SOLIDWORKS. And for more useful videos like this, please subscribe to the Hawkridge Systems YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.